Hello, and welcome to another session of uh, Surgical Pathology, Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming to you from the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, part of OU Health. Um, our case today uh, comes from the realm of GYN pathology, um, but it's a, a case that illustrates a number of important principles uh, relative to uh, clinical examination, clinical history, and, and uh, testing algorithms. Uh, so I think it has a lot of educational value. Uh, the patient initially presented uh, with abnormal vaginal bleeding that had gone on uh, for several months. Uh, in fact, her medical history uh, and story at presentation was uh, quite uh, complicated. Uh, about four months prior to uh, arrival on our campus, she had developed uh, daily bleeding. Um, and that had in, uh, ensued for quite a long period of time uh, and then later became associated with uh, abdominal pain. Well, uh, of course, uh, she came to attention uh, after this uh, at the emergency department. And uh, on examination and so forth, they made a diagnosis of uh, tube ovarian abscesses and she was treated uh, with uh, 14 days of uh, antibiotics, anti uh, um, um, parasitics and so forth. Uh, plus some uh, hormonal therapy to try to uh, control the bleeding. Unfortunately, uh, this had no impact. Um, and she returned again to the emergency room uh, sometime later with um, uh, further pain and was found on ultrasound to have a very thickened endometrial stripe. So with this combination of uh, endometrial uh, kind of uh, lesion and uh, adnexal masses, uh, she moved then towards uh, surgery. At the time of surgery, they found uh, with, with hysteroscopy and laparoscopy, they uh, found a bulky kind of uh, endometrium um, and the uh, abdominal cavity looked uh, uh, quite concerning. Uh, it looked somewhat uh, like this uh, with uh, lots of uh, nodular miliary type masses along the uh, surfaces of the uh, peritoneal cavity. Uh, the uh, pelvic uh, organs were somewhat uh, uh, clamped in, uh, could not be uh, mobilized. Uh, she had a very serous fluid uh, or, or sort of gelatinous fluid uh, in the abdomen as well uh, that made things look quite concerning for malignancy. Well, they didn't obtain a biopsy of the peritoneum, but they did get a, uh, an endometrial sample, uh, which we have now here on the slide. As you can see, this does not look uh, particularly neoplastic. It's mostly solid. There's a few glandular structures uh, here in areas, um, but it's a mixture of tissue types, um, some mucus, some glandular tissue. And as we come down here, it looks as though there may be something uh, more on the stromal side of things, although the spacing of the glands here is fairly uh, typical. Uh, the stroma appears to be expanded. Uh, as we come into higher magnification, uh, we can see that there are uh, small abscess uh, type uh, structures um, and uh, damage to some of the glands, but a very, um, how would you say it, a very histiocytic uh, type of uh, polymorphous uh, enlargement of the uh, um, spaces between the uh, glands. Um, and in fact, there's, a, as we said, polys, some little foci of necrosis, um, and maybe some plasma cells associated with this here that you can see, as you would expect in an inflammatory process potentially going on for uh, four to five months or longer. Uh, so uh, with this appearance of uh, uh, what would be termed a granulomata uh, in the uh, um, endometrial tissue, uh, of course, we uh, turned to uh, acid fast and fungal stains. Uh, those were negative. However, we later learned that she had had a uh, 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 PPD skin test performed uh, prior to surgery, which was positive, and that a serum test had been sent off, uh, the quantiferon gold test, which also indicated uh, that the interferon release assay was positive, uh, suggestive of uh, mycobacteria tuberculosis infection. And so just to review kind of what's uh, out there for screening and diagnosis of tuberculosis, there are a lot of routes to the diagnosis. 
Um, certainly skin testing in some settings can be useful, although obviously this is just indicative of exposure, uh, can, can mean latent infection, active, active infection, and even when it's negative, it can, can still not be, it can still be helpful because it may indicate uh, immune, immune suppression. Sputum samples have a, have a role in some settings, as does uh, the blood or serum assay that I've indicated. Uh, tissue biopsies, such as uh, the endometrial sample, of course, is, is useful. Radiology, chest x-ray has been used, other uh, methodologies. Uh, although in this case, uh, the focus on the abdomen, abdomen and uh, pelvic organs uh, did not raise the consideration of uh, uh, tuberculosis uh, preoperatively. Uh, culture, of course, uh, plays a role, but as we know, uh, mycobacterial cultures take an inordinately long time to grow. Uh, and so smear uh, techniques, uh, either uh, primarily on sputum samples, uh, but occasionally on other samples can be useful because they can allow you to concentrate uh, volumes of, of uh, material uh, into an area and use uh, high sensitivity uh, stains. Uh, we've mentioned the interferon release assays. And then uh, lastly, uh, for some situations uh, with tissue and so forth, rapid diagnosis can be obtained using uh, PCR-based assays. In fact, uh, there's a couple of ways to think about it. And certainly when someone presents with pulmonary symptoms, uh, standard means uh, have been usually sputum and culture looking for uh, acid fast bacilli on the smear. Uh, of course, in this situation, there are a number of uh, pretest probability issues that come along depending on symptoms, depending on uh, HIV uh, status, and so forth and depending on the resources that one has available to use for screening. So in some circumstances, uh, high quality uh, smears and concentration techniques are not available. So chest X-ray may be a preferred first step. Uh, in other circumstances, uh, molecular assays such as the expert MI or MTB and RIF assays may be present and uh, can provide rapid uh, uh, information. Uh, Another uh, approach, of course, is with asymptomatic people who've been exposed. Uh, this is the more frequent uh, situation that uh, many uh, hospital or otherwise healthy people go through to uh, verify that they're not uh, carriers. Uh, usually this is a skin test. If they've been exposed to uh, BCG as a, a child or otherwise, they may have a chest X-ray or a serum test, interferon test to uh, uh, document things. So the presentation, and the resources that are available to one for evaluation become very, very important. Um, with regard to non-pulmonary disease, uh, this is where usually, such as in our case, uh, we're looking at either an FNA or a biopsy uh, that may need to be submitted for culture. Uh, because the suspicion of tuberculosis was not high, uh, preoperatively, the culture was not uh, obtained, uh, but PCR assay was performed and of course, the serum quantiferon uh, test was uh, performed. When we think about examining uh, AFB stains, whether on sputum, uh, concentrations, and so forth, or on tissue, uh, there are a couple of things to remember. Uh, if we can concentrate a sputum sample, that becomes uh, much more sensitive than if we just use a direct smear where the organisms are going to be very rare, few and far between. Uh, the staining method matters. Uh, the fluorescent stains, the oramines and so forth are, are more sensitive, more easily interpreted than are the Brightfield, Zeal, Nielsen uh, type stains. Um, quality control and technical issues matter in this. So uh, the qual quality of the water, uh, the quality of the staining materials and reagents are very critical factors in being able to get uh, reliable um, results and to have confidence in those results, which becomes very important when you're thinking about embarking someone on a, on a treatment regimen that may last uh, months to potentially years. Um, and then finally, the experience and the diligence of the examiner matters. Uh, acid fast stains cannot be just uh, brushed through very quickly, like an immunohistochemical stain um, and seen as positive or negative at low magnification. It requires considerable um, a time, a thorough examination, a consistent protocol uh, to evaluate the smears um, at appropriate magnification uh, where the uh, rare organisms uh, can be seen. I can recall one instance, uh, a, a good colleague of mine 
uh, examining uh, smears, finding a rare, tiny organism and being questioned by the residents saying, how did you find that? It, that's, so, that's too small, it looks too small. And uh, Dr. Lingaman simply replied, oh, it's cut on edge. <laughs> so uh, cross sections versus uh, full thickness sections uh, can be uh, very interesting to do, interpret. So uh, finally, uh, the other take home message here is that tuberculous peritonitis can very closely mimic carcinomatosis. Uh, our patient was described as having papillary lesions all over the upper and lower abdomen, very concerning for carcinomatosis. And this by an experienced gynecologic uh, oncologist. Uh, additionally, the posterior pel pelvis had this gelatinous material that looked like sort of a tumor exudate uh, sort of situation and ascites was present. So all of these can be signs of uh, peritoneal carcinomatosis, but uh, in the situation of a young woman, uh, not likely to have disseminated disease, uh, but with a, uh, an ethnic origin and uh, past history that could be uh, compatible with exposure to tuberculosis, uh, the uh, pretest probability goes up and uh, that uh, should uh, raise consideration of these other uh, type of possibilities. Well, thanks for joining us. Our final sign out on this case is necrotizing granulomatous endometritis, consistent with disseminated mycobacterial infection. Um, and uh, we hope that the patient will go on to a proper therapy and uh, hopefully a good outcome. Hope you liked that program. And if you did, please uh, subscribe. Uh, that helps us out a lot. Uh, and uh, we also would enjoy your uh, feedback, uh, what things you found uh, uh, concerning what times uh, common diseases in uncommon locations have uh, uh, stymied your uh, interpretation, and just uh, what other questions you may want to pose or put out there for discussion about uh, disseminated uh, tuberculosis. So until next time, uh, thanks so much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you then.